Okay, so if you can turn to page 11 of your packet, we're going to talk about bow tie triangles. Now, let me just first start off telling you why they're called bow tie triangles. Um, if you want to make a triangle within a quadrant, right, let's, let's look at the first quadrant. You always put the hypotenuse of the triangle, you always go diagonally out into that quadrant, and you would connect that to your x-axis. So in this case, we're going to connect down to the x-axis. So in the first quadrant, this is what... This is how we would draw a, tri a right triangle. Okay, if we were in the second quadrant, we would go diagonally out into the second quadrant. You always connect to the x-axis, okay, never to the y-axis. So this is what a second quadrant triangle would look like, right triangle. Okay, if we go in the third quadrant, you go diagonally out, and you would connect that up to the x-axis. Okay, we're always, again, connecting to the x-axis, not the y-axis. And that's what a third quadrant triangle would look like. And in the fourth quadrant, if we want to make a triangle, we would go diagonally out into the quadrant, and again, connect to the x-axis. So the reason why they're called bow tie triangles is because if you took each of these triangles and kind of put them on the same set of axes, they look like a bow tie. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so now if you think back to um, actually geometry, we have some rules when we're dealing with right triangles that relate our sides and our angles to each other. And there was a word that we used. It was so... Katoa. And I would actually write this at the top of the page. On page 11, you could write Sokotoa at the top of the page. And what this means is this tells us that sine of our angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so you could see here we have S O H. Here's where the S is. Here's where the O is, and here's where the H is. Sine of our angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, if we look at the next part of this, CAH. All right, so the C stands for cosine, A stands for adjacent, and H stands for hypotenuse. So cosine of our angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So we could write that as well. Cosine of our angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And then finally, this last part right here, TOA, that tells us that tan of our angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. All right, so we're going to use really these three formulas to help us with some of the examples on the next few pages. All right, I'm going to choose like three of them to do with you, and then the rest of them you guys are going to do on your own for homework, and then we'll go over them uh, next time I see you in class. Okay, I'm going to skip over 16 because that one's not so bad. I'm going to start with 17. I want to do that one with you. All right, now it tells us, it gives us two things. It first says that tan of A, A just stands for our angle. Tan of our angle is equal to radical 7 over 5, and sine of our angle is less than 0. Now, we want to draw a triangle, and we have to first decide which quadrant we're going to be working in. So if you guys just want to think about, I'm just going to kind of put this off to the side here. All students take calculus. And just to remind you, what that means is A stands for all. That means all trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. Okay, in the first quadrant right here, sine, cosine, and tan are all positive. S stands for sine. That means that sine is the only trig function, well, that we know of so far, that's positive in the second quadrant. Okay, cosine is negative and tan is negative. In the third quadrant, T stands for tan. That means tan is the only one of these three trig functions that's positive in the third quadrant. So tan is positive in the third quadrant, sine and cosine are not. And then C stands for cosine. Cosine is the only one of these three trig functions that's positive in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so let's go over to what we're given here. We're given that tan of our angle equals positive. 7, radical 7 over 5. So if tan is positive, we know that tan is positive in the first quadrant as well as the third quadrant. So, so far we could be talking about the first quadrant or the third quadrant. I'm just going to write that to kind of organize myself. Okay, then it says over here, sine of our angle A is less than 0. So basically sine is negative. Well, if sine is positive in quadrant 1 and 2, that means it's negative in quadrants 3 and 4. So the second condition tells us we can be in quadrant 3 or 4. All right, well, that must mean we're working in quadrant 3 because that's the only quadrant that satisfies both conditions. So let's first draw out a triangle 
in our third quadrant. So we know when we draw out a triangle, we go diagonally out into the quadrant, and you always connect to the x axis. So here's our triangle. And angle A is always going to be the angle between the x axis and the hypotenuse. Kind of where your reference angle would be if we were to draw a third quadrant angle. Okay, so let's just think. I'm going to write somewhere on this paper where I could fit it. I'll kind of put this off to the side. I'm going to write so ka toa because that's going to be kind of important to us with all of these examples. All right, now, if we look up here, it says that tan of our angle is equal to radical 7 over 5. Now, since tan is equal to opposite over adjacent, what that means is this must be our opposite and this must be our adjacent, right? Tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. So radical 7 must be our opposite and radical 5 must be our adjacent. So if we go on our triangle over here, here's angle A. The side opposite of angle A is the side across from it, this side right here. So on this side, this is going to be radical 7. And then adjacent means next to. So, I mean, we actually have two sides that are next to this angle. We have this side as well as this side. But this long side we call our hypotenuse. So adjacent is the smaller of the two sides that's next to the angle. And the adjacent is always going to be right on the x-axis. So since, again, the adjacent is 5, I'm going to put a 5 right on that side. All right, so this was our adjacent. This is our opposite. And then we're going to want to go ahead and find the hypotenuse. Now we know that if we have a right triangle, if you know two sides of a right triangle, you can always do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and that's how we could find the third side of a right triangle. Now c squared, c is always going to be the longest side of the triangle, so it's going to be the hypotenuse. So in this case, this is what we're looking for. So I can plug in, um, it doesn't matter what you use for a and b, you could either use 5 for a or 5 for b, either way. Um, I'll just do 5 for a and radical 7 for b, and again, c is what we're solving for. Okay, so 5 squared is 25, and radical 7 squared is just 7. So when we add those, we get 32. Okay, now to get rid of a square, we take the square root. And when you take the square root, technically we would have a positive and a negative here, but we don't want to include the negative because a triangle is not going to have a negative length. So I'm just going to write, you know, positive radical 32. And since 32 is not a perfect square, we want to break that up. We want to get the biggest perfect square out of there, you know, that we can. So 32 would break up into 16 and 2. So I could write radical 16, radical 2. And since the square root of 16 is 4, so I'm not really fitting this, and radical 2 doesn't break up, I'm just going to bring down 4 radical 2. All right, it's really hard to read that because it wouldn't fit on the screen. But this right here, our, our hypotenuse is 4 radical 2. Okay, now once we have the question, once we have this triangle drawn, we can kind of go to the question and try to answer it. Now there's two things they want us to find. They want us to find sine of A. So let me write this here, sine of A. And the other thing they want us to find, I'm just going to bring it down here so I don't forget about it, is cosine of A. Okay. And by the way, this was supposed to be an equal sign up here, but it didn't really look like one. All right, now let's think about, let's go back to Sokotoa. So we know that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So next to sine of A, I'm just going to write opposite over hypotenuse. And I'm just going to look at my triangle. And when I look at my triangle, my opposite is right here, radical 7. And my hypotenuse is right here, 4 radical 2. So I'm going to have for right now, radical 7 over 4 radical 2. Now, before I go any further, keep in mind, this is really important, right? All students take calculus. If we're in the third quadrant, tan is the only one of these three trig functions that's positive. So sine is negative. So we're going to go back and put a negative in front of opposite over hypotenuse as well as a negative in front of our answer. Now the other problem with this answer is that we never want to leave ourselves with a radical in the denominator of the fraction, so we want to rationalize this. Now there's lots of different things you could multiply by to rationalize this denominator, 
but the easiest way to do it is to multiply the top and bottom by the radical that's in the denominator itself. So if we multiply the top and bottom by radical 2, okay, well, let's see. On the top, radical 7 times radical 2 is just radical 14. And in the denominator, radical 2 times radical 2 is just 2. So it's really 4 times 2, which is 8. So there's our answer for sine of a, negative radical 14 over 8. Okay, so now let's take a look at cosine of a. All right, so first of all, if we're thinking about Sokotoa, we know that cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's write cosine of a equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Now let's think about our sine. All right, so again, we're in the second, uh, I'm sorry, third quadrant, and in the third quadrant, tan is the only one of these three trig functions that's positive, okay? So cosine is not going to be positive here. So we'll put a negative sign in front of adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so then I'm just going to bring over the negative sign, and if I look at our triangle over here, adjacent is 5, and hypotenuse is, again, 4 radical 2. So we'll write this as 5 over 4 radical 2. Okay, so in order to rationalize the denominator, in order to get rid of the radical in the denominator of the fraction, let's again multiply by rad 2 over rad 2. So that's going to leave us with negative, and in our numerator, 5 times radical 2 is just 5 radical 2. And then again, same thing as the last one in the denominator, since rad 2 times rad 2 is just 2, 4 times 2 is 8. And you want to look at the numbers, like outside the radical. We have a 5 and we have an 8. If these were to, you know, if there was something that divided evenly into them, you'd want to simplify this fraction. But since we don't, negative 5 radical 2 over 8 is the answer uh, for cosine of a. All right, if you can flip to the back of this page, uh, we're going to skip 18. You could try that one on your own. Uh, but number 19, the way that this is worded is a little bit different, so I want to just talk about this together. Okay, it says a circle centered at the origin has a radius of 10 units. All right, so I'm just going to draw an x and a y axis. And if the circle is centered at the origin, here's the center, and it has a radius of 10, it just means it goes out 10 units in each direction. So, I mean, you don't have to write the coordinates um, on the x and y axis, but what that means is if we were to come out 10 units, the coordinate right here would be 10, 0. If you want to put it on there, you can, but you don't have to. If we were to go up 10 units from the origin, this, the coordinate of this point right here would be 0, 10. Okay, if we were to go to the left 10 units from the origin, that would be negative 10, 0. And if we were to go down 10 units from the origin, that would be 0, negative 10. All right, so anyway, back to the um, problem itself. It says, um, the second sentence, the terminal side of an angle, theta, intercepts the circle in quadrant 2 at point C. Okay, so the terminal side of an angle. So we know that if we have an angle, the initial side goes on the positive portion of the x-axis, and this angle is going to open up, and it says that um, it intercepts the circle in quadrant 2 at point C. So basically what we have is the terminal side is in quadrant 2, so this is the terminal side of our angle, and it says it intercepts this circle in quadrant 2 at point C. So the point of intersection with the angle, the terminal side of the angle and the circle is right there, and we're going to call that point C. Now they tell us the y-coordinate of point C is 8. So we don't know the x-coordinate. I'm actually just going to call that x, but we do know that the y-coordinate is 8. All right, so now this angle, by the way, this second quadrant angle is called theta. Now, if we want to find, um, they want us to find here the value of cosine of theta. Now, right here, if we want to find the value of cosine of this angle, we need to look at its reference angle. Its reference angle is what's going to help us find cosine of this big angle. Um, if you want to, you know, if you want to see how reference angles relate to, um, you know, like second quadrant angles, third quadrant angles, and so on, if you just want to try, this is a total side note, it has nothing to do with this question, but like, 
let's say we had an angle. I'm going to stick in the second quadrant. Let's say we had an angle in the second quadrant that was 120 degrees, right? Like this. Let's say this is 120 degrees. Well, then its reference angle would be 60 degrees. If you plug into your calculator sine of 120 degrees, uh, your calculator would give you like approximately 0 0.8660. If you plug in your calculator sine of its reference angle, sine of 60 degrees, it'll also give you 0 0.8660. So, I mean, really the only reason I'm saying that is so that you could see what we're going to do is we're going to actually, in order to help us find cosine of this angle, we're really going to take into consideration its reference angle. Because if we were to take, um, let me just get a different color marker here. If we were to take this point and connect it down to the x-axis and then just, you know, basically form a right triangle, we can use bow tie triangles to help us find um, cosine of this angle, which is the reference angle. Okay, so anyway, let's do this. So um, first thing, I mean, based on what they give us, we actually do know two sides of this triangle. Because think about this. If we know that uh, the radius of this circle right here is 10, the radius is just the distance from the center to, you know, the edge of the circle. Isn't this from here to here the radius of the circle, right? So the hypotenuse of this triangle is equal to the radius of the circle. So I'm going to put a 10 on the side of our triangle. And then also... If we know the y-coordinate of this point is 8, think about it. To get to this point, wouldn't you have to go back however many units and then up 8 to get to this point? So that means that the length of this side of the triangle is 8. Okay, and we know we can easily find the third side of a right triangle by doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, that's called the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so we're looking for one of the smaller sides. So you're either going to solve for a or b. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to solve for a. So we'll have a squared plus the other small side is 8, so we'll plug that in for b. And our biggest side, the hypotenuse, is 10, so we'll plug that in for c. c is always the hypotenuse. Okay, so that gives us a squared plus 64 equals 100. When we subtract 64 from both sides, that leaves us with a squared equals 36. And then when we take the square root, we get a equals positive and negative 6. But we're only going to write positive 6 because a triangle the side of a triangle can't be negative, it'd have to be positive. Okay, so now that we have our diagram, let's go back and answer the question. The question says, what is the value of cosine of theta? Okay, well, let's think about SOCATOA. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and our triangle over here is in the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant, cosine is negative, right? All students take calculus. Sine is what's positive here. So since cosine is negative, let's put a negative in front of the a over h. All right, so let me bring this negative down, and then if I look at my triangle, a the adjacent, and let's just label these. This would be opposite of our angle. This would be the adjacent, and this would be the hypotenuse over here. So the adjacent would be 6, and the hypotenuse would be 10. And then negative 6 over 10 does simplify to negative 3 fifths. I mean, if you want to write it as a decimal, that's also equal to negative 0.6. That's a terminating decimal. It's not like you're rounding, so it's okay to do that as well. All right, and then the last one I'm going to do with you is number 22. So if you could flip to the next page. It says, the terminal side of angle A in standard position passes through the point negative 15.8. What is the numerical value of cosine of A? All right, so this is worded even different than the last two, but if it passes through the point negative 15, 8, all right, so that's the terminal side of our angle. So if I were to draw an angle, okay, we know here's the initial side, and if it's going to pass through the point negative 15, 8, what that means is um, if you go back 15 and up 8, figure you'd wind up somewhere around here, right? So I don't know, I'm just right about here. So figure our angle, let me just label that. The terminal side of the angle is going to wind up right here, passing through that point in quadrant 2. Okay, so they want us to find cosine of A. All right, so let's do kind of the same thing we're doing for the rest. Let's make a bow tie triangle. So I'm going to connect this. You always connect to the x-axis, okay? 
don't connect to the, um, never connect to the y-axis. So you're going to connect down to the x-axis and form your triangle. And our angle that we're looking for is going to be right in there. And then we know two sides of the triangle. I mean, if we had to go back 15 and up 8 to get to this point, that means even though we went back 15, you're not going to put a negative 15 on this side of the triangle because, you know, a triangle can't have a negative side. But it means we went, you know, we moved 15 units to get from here to here. So you could put a 15 on this side of the triangle. And then we had to go 8 units up to get to that point. So this is going to be 8. Now, if you know your Pythagorean triples, like the most common ones are the 3, 4, 5 right triangle, the 5, 12, 13 right triangle, and the 8, 15, 17 right triangle, this right here is your 8, 15, 17 right triangle. So the length of this side should be 17. If you want to just double check, you can just plug that into the Pythagorean theorem. So we have our two smaller sides. So in this case, we're going to be solving for C. So that gives us 64 plus 225 equals C squared. And when you add those together, you get 289. And then the square root of 289 is positive and negative 17, but we're just going to write the positive because the triangle can have a negative length. All right, so we're actually almost done. So from here, we know cosine of A. All right, cosine, we just said cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. That's supposed to be an A. And then um, since we're in the second quadrant, we know cosine is negative. So then let me bring down the negative. The adjacent is right here. So that's going to be negative 15 over, and our hypotenuse is right here. So negative 15 over 17. All right, so at this point, what I'd like you to do is on uh, pages 11 through 13, any of the examples I skipped, I'd like you to try on your own, and then um, we'll go over them. That's part of your homework assignment. So you have to do numbers 16, 18, 20, and 21.